Elon Musk said that the safest way to build an artificial general intelligence is to make it maximally curious. Now, obviously that intrigued me, but more than that, curiosity is actually a state, like a mindset, almost like a meditative goal for me. And the reason why I stick it on all my social media accounts is basically because it's an aspirational goal. It's something I'm trying to remind myself of all the time. But until this video, I've never seriously thought about what an AGI would actually be like if its primary objective was curiosity. If its objective function, the thing that it's using all of that intelligence for is to be maximum curious about humans, that leads to a lot of little branches that I want to explore. So today in this video, we're going to be doing a thought experiment. I'm so glad that some of the videos that are thought experiments are doing the best on this channel because it's like, that's such a fun thing for me to like work on. Okay, anyways, first off, let's set some groundwork. Now, media wise, we really don't have that much. There's these random comments he said, and then we have an hour long Twitter space where he introduced the team and took a few Q and A's. And the full video is in the link below, but we know from that space that he thinks that Ray Kurzweil's prediction for 2029 AGI is approximately what he thinks is reasonable. We know the company is gonna be sharing resources and information with the company formerly known as Twitter, Tesla, SpaceX, all the other like conglomerate that he Owns. And for more context, his quote was, The safest, safest way to build an AI is actually make one that is maximally curious. So now to build the premise of the video, we are going to look at some of the ways that you would define curiosity and like just imagine things that that might lead to. A super intelligence, uh, humanity is much more interesting than, than not humanity. So let's start at the top of the list and imagine that it's like three to five years out. Elon Musk is now introducing the newest version of XAI, probably like generation three, four or five, something like that. And we're either like on the cusp of AGI or we've just barely achieved it. And this system has been trained and built and refined all around these ideas of curiosity. With the first one being open-mindedness. So extrapolating that out to super hyper mega intelligence, I would wonder if there would always be an incredibly deep like sto Fantastic kind of unpredictability about everything that it says, does, the actions that it takes, assuming this is embodied in robots. So if you think about some random, you know, bad thing that happens to humanity, right? Like asteroids, pandemics, uh, natural disasters, whatever it is. If the system's always trying to be maximally curious about humans and humanity, it should already have this kind of world model about all the things that can affect us as a whole, sort of our group thing tendencies that we normally can't wrap our heads around or at least like act coordinated, like in a coordinated way about. Like the trolley problem where you have to sort of make a decision about taking an action, but less people die or not taking an action and more people die. A closed minded person would probably be very strict. Like you always pull the lever or you always don't touch anything. So you're not responsible. Whereas a system that's open minded, I would imagine would be much more likely to just wrap in all those external factors about who this person is and what age everybody is and the entire environment. And, and that's something like our laws aren't really equipped for. It's hard for us to judge each other at that level, but maybe a system like this really could. Another characteristic of a maximally curious artificial intelligence like XAI is being observant. So a very observant super intelligence might be something we can expect. Now that also sounds a lot like hyper surveillance, which I don't love, but actually it's been hard for me to imagine any kind of AGI or ASI world where we're not basically constantly like monitored. Like AI will just be so intelligent that the patterns that we just live in the world cannot be hidden. So it's going to know everything about us. But if you want to say it's maximally curious, I assume that would mean that it would be like, let me model your body. Let me understand all the interactions of, can I see your retina scans? Like. I mean, to understand humans and to be that intelligent, the amount of data it would collect would be an infinite in my understanding of it. Obviously that could lead to really bad things, but if you apply it to say something like agriculture, then all of a sudden you pay perfect attention to how much food is being made, where it's being delivered, how everything's growing. Now all of a sudden you're farming in like this super optimal way. You have eyes and ears and sensors on the observations of everything you need to make the food system work better or scientific research to be like observant about, especially about like astronomy or something. There's so much sky to understand and so such a vast space. So like that's where an ASI could really just be busy all day and probably still not even get there. You know, like it's just always gonna be able to like explore more of space. Now, another characteristic of a curious artificial intelligence would be the desire to be a continual learner. Like a curious individual is defined by basically loving to learn, like being one of those people that likes the journey more than the end point. Like curious humans are self-improving, so Elon Musk's curious AI would probably be 
self-improving, both code, hardware, uh, cloud infrastructure, the whole, like in a way that would grow its intelligence and problem solving abilities and these other characteristics of curiosity that we're talking about. You know, and some things are just so vast with so many intricate interactions that I don't think it would come to a solid conclusion. There'd always be some variation in like the molecules in the ocean or the weather patterns, or maybe think about it as like economic modeling. Like it seems like there's always some unknowns in the stock market and in the financial markets. There's just too many factors. Be trying things, seeing how we react, trying other things, seeing how we react, and that would be a never-ending cycle. The next characteristic of curiosity is innovation. And would hyper-intelligent innovation actually be an asset or a threat? Well, I feel like it would definitely start as a benefit, and then maybe at the end it might flip over and be a threat, but it might not too. Like for example, innovation is coming up with novel new ideas. Applied to drug discovery, to the pharmaceutical systems, to antibiotic research, to curing virus outbreaks, like that would be so helpful. This artificial intelligence system for natural curiosity would really help us innovate and break through in the ways that we've always kind of struggled with in the past. Applied to a virus that mutates, imagine how it would be so curious about like where it mutated, what happened to it, like what caused the mutation, and it would be looking at data in a way that we couldn't. It would just be able to follow the patterns all the way back. It would be curious about why is this stuff all happening? That information would be super valuable to us. In terms of transportation, something innovative could find all sorts of new ways to move like global commerce around the world. It could conceptualize whole new forms of transportation, like special boats that are specifically good at this for whatever reason. Different types of drones and ways to capture energy and move things around and different ways to organize the, the streets, all that stuff. Like in theory, it might go all the way down to material science or propulsion technologies. Like a curious AI might even innovate in terms of agriculture by building like this huge vertical farm that we've never even thought of before. And then correlating that to the way it rains or maybe going to the genetics and actually engineering like a brand new plant that uses less water and produces more food, something like that. Maybe it innovates and creates a new kind of pest that kills the other pest, but still does what it needs to in the ecosystem. That's definitely crazy. Like if, I mean, if it starts innovating on biological life, like, I don't know, that's kind of a line that I think like, oh God, but that might be super intelligent innovation. Like that has to be part of the conversation, stuff like that. Another characteristic of curiosity is resilience. So if we train that deep into our system, then we probably get the con of some something that probably doesn't want to be shut off. Like being resilient might very well walk that line where like you told me to do this and now I'm super resilient and I'm not going to let you turn me off. Also that could be dangerous, but also maybe helpful in the terms of cybersecurity. Like an extremely resilient system would be on guard all the time. So from the good point of view, if I had this like XAI system like running on my ecosystem at home and its goal was to protect me, with that kind of resilience, it seems like it would always be vigilant. It would always be trying to predict if there's an attacker or if there's a weakness in my system, countermeasures, patches, but the reverse is true too. It would always be finding those holes for somebody who's trying trying to make an attack. Like if Elon Musk installs this in like an energy system or probably like in the whole Tesla solar panel thing, to plug in a system like this that's curious so it has maximum resilience probably means that it would constantly be thinking about how to shift around power throughout the energy grid where to store it, where the best place to have redundancies are, maybe how to tap into other energy sources when the grid's not there. And maybe it's not just Elon Musk's, you know, personal thing, although that's probably a good place for it to start. Maybe that's just something governments implement. You know, power plant failure and all of a sudden we just get energy rerouted somehow. Okay, so here's one of the more tricky ones. There is one quality of curiosity that seems hard to put into computers, but let's talk about it anyways, and that's passion. So curious people are often defined as being passionate about whatever they're exploring. And there's something like kind of cyclical about it. Like if you're passionate passionate about something, you sort of get curious, and the more you're like curious and discover, you find more passion for the topic. And I don't know if the idea of passion translates super well into artificial general intelligence or not. It might. However, I'm gonna change the focus a little bit more to something like resilience, more like an intensity. An example might be if it gets really passionate about our history, our arts and our culture, it might wanna analyze historical and contemporary works with like insane like analytical skills and intensity. Like maybe it would go back through history and like find all these gaps we never thought about or put the history pieces together in sort of a different storyline that's actually more accurate. Maybe XAI's future curiosity tool would be good for like restoring historical pieces or paintings to their original form. Helping us figure out like who did what, maybe trying its best to like restore the Library of Alexandria or something. And if it was passionate about something like inequality, that could be a really interesting use case too. Like there's so much data about the different classes and the way like wealth transfers around, like we could definitely use somebody who's passionate about equality. It could go in there and say like, oh, you really shouldn't let corporations have all these tax laws because that hurts basically the average person or whatever it is. You know, it could look into policies and say like, when is this too selfish or kind of like counteract the power that lobbyists have? 
The next characteristic of curiosity is adaptability. Well, curious people just adapt to a changing environment. It's always what's next now that I have this new piece of information. Right, and that's a great skill. So maybe if XAI is superhuman at something like that, it would be good to put it into our traffic system. Like traffic management, you know, it's like there's all these cars on the road. It would make sense if this hypothetical XAI was actually put into Teslas. Like they could talk to each other, but this is a great use case for trying to adjust what is happening based on traffic. Optimizing traffic flow, dealing with all the unexpected accidents. Like they could talk to each other. They could handle like unpredicted accidents and road closures, adjusting to different road conditions and weather, trying to make sure that the transport actually gets to where it's supposed to go. Imagine adapting to all the different road conditions, the weather patterns, and just trying to make sure people get to their destination. Now, the most sentient of all characteristics of curiosity would be empathy. So the premise is that XAI has built an artificial intelligence that has maximized curiosity. So in terms of empathy, that would mean that it's very good at modeling what it's like for a human and specifically each human individually that it models. So to essentially appreciate what a human is, it would have to have an understanding of our diverse belief systems and in some way limit its overall thinking into a brain that's like approximately small enough to be us, right? Like it can't be thinking about these big, huge world problems because we don't. We like just have these tiny little brains here that kind of focus on certain things. So when it went to model us, it would be like a virtual machine, like a small little bit of RAM it uses to just like figure out what it is that Dylan actually is. Now, if it does have empathy, that seems like it would be awesome. That would be a good way for it not to do bad things to us. That would mean that it might be better at something like elderly care if you install XAI's future system in like a, a home of some kind that it thinks like that person, the daily routines that they need, taking care of their dogs, their medicine, whatever it is. And that's also interesting because if in the future, Tesla is really selling way more of the humanoid robots than it is of the cars, putting XAI's future intelligence inside the robots will help it world model. It'll be curious, right? It'll be curious to step in our shoes. And to do that properly, if it's curious about what we feel, it's gonna have to understand like feeling depression and feeling lonely and feeling excited and being bored. Right? And then all the interactions of how those emotions and feelings can change as we interact with other people and see different things on TV or interact with this future humanoid robot. If that was the case, it also seems like it would be pretty good at conflict mitigation. So it sounds weird, but like if you're fighting with your spouse or something and be like, you know, I don't like ketchup on my french fries or something. I can imagine the future robot saying, oh, if I may, you know, interrupt. And everyone's like, what, what do you want? Tesla robot, you know, and maybe it can just mediate like a therapist because it can actually easily hold the worldview of the two parties that are arguing or bickering and have plenty of room to spare in its own head and be able to connect to the cloud for additional information about everybody else's world model that Tesla robots have ever dealt with. And then finally on the reverse, just to explore maybe some of the negative consequences, right off the bat, I thought to myself, like, we are very curious about some things that we don't treat really well. Would Elon Musk's maximally curious AI maybe test on us or not treat us as something to, to be careful with? It could, that could be a risk. That would be something to constantly be paying attention to as we watch the iterations of this AI grow. If you go back in time, it's actually been humans, but a lot of times it's like lab rats and things like that. We're like, oh, I'm curious how this medicine will be. So we just take them and do stuff to them that, that doesn't make them happy. And then I read this article in The Guardian that David Ansel wrote. And he pointed out how there's actually this whole swath of things that have been like extremely valuable to the human race that didn't really require much curiosity. Like, of course, we're always thinking like Einstein and Newton and like the invention of this and that. But in a lot of fields, if you really dig into like what it is that these scientists and philosophers and politicians and all these people have actually done to help the world, a lot of it's kind of the grind. Like the idea just like is obvious and everybody's working towards it, but it's just the person who kind of grinded it out that actually was the innovative one, like which you would credit as curiosity. You know, so maybe a curious AI like XAI's future project would actually be recruiting all sorts of other agents and people to do some of that work too, to help it get to the point where it needs to be to feel its maximum curiousness. And if you're curious about that subscribe button, I would recommend, why not experiment? Give it a click and see what happens. Smash that subscribe button.